didn't grow up in the worst place, but it's not anywhere I would want to raise my kids. I remember waking up for school. The number one feeling I would feel going outside was fear. I remember the first time I got shot at, I was around the age of six or seven. I'm not sure, I was taking out the trash. And whenever we heard the gunshots, we ran right back to the house and I got inside and I was panting. And I remember my mom told me that whenever we hear gunshots, that we should jump to the ground and stay there until the gunshots were done. But <laughs> when I got inside, she was asking me why I was panting so hard. And I remember telling her, Mom, there's gunshots outside. Did you hear them? And she was like, yes. And she turned me around and beat the heck out of me. And that was a day. My mom was always working 60, 70 hour weeks. And then my dad, um, I guess whenever I got to grade school, got a job as a merchant seaman. So he was always out of the house. And so um, they started had, my mom had to start finding babysitters in order to take care of me. They went through babysitters left and right. And I remember when the babysitter they had chosen abused me. I, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't think anything of it, so I wasn't, I didn't feel led to say anything about it. I remember moving away from that place when I was uh, 12 to South Carolina, but we still came back every year to visit the church that we used to attend in Newport News. And I remember when I saw the person's face for the first time, I was 14 years old, and it clicked in my head uh, what they had done to me. And I, I never wanted to harm someone uh, more in my life than at that moment, whenever I came to that realization um, that the abuse had occurred. After that clicked for me, I started to think, how could God allow that to ha happen to someone like me or someone like my mom, her child? So I started to entertain the idea of suicide, having the thoughts that my life was meaningless. And I remember crawling in bed one day at the age of 16 with a knife and slitting my left wrist two times, and I guess it's the sight of the blood that made me panic and come to my senses. Um, I immediately jumped in the car and went to the emergency room, and thankfully, no permanent damage was done. <laughs> So I contemplated for a long time re returning to Virginia and I decided to return after I graduated from high school to visit my best friend. And I found out that I was not going to be able to see my abuser unless I had joined this gang. I had decided that I wanted to confront him on my own terms. And so I started going through the process of initiation into, into that gang and I received the tattoo, which was their mark, um, which was a Panamanian flower and my mother's initials inside of them. I remember after Getting that tattoo, I received a call not two weeks later from one of the gang members uh, telling me they had a job for me to do. 
And so my friend wanted to hang out with me that night and he had no idea what was going on so I tried to keep him away but he ended up coming with me and my job was to take my abuser to a certain location and I remember when we reached our destination I remember reaching in the glove compartment box taking that handgun stepping out of the car aiming it at the house and waiting for them to come out my friend who was sitting in the back seat who came along with me had no idea what was going on and was freaking out but my thought process at the time was pretty cloudy However, in that moment, I remembered um, a conversation that I shared with my mom um, not too long ago, before that moment, and that had to do with a story that you can find in verse uh, 21 of chapter 18 in Matthew. Peter asked Christ, how many times should I forgive my brother if he offended me? Um, and of course, Jesus gave a clever answer, which was seven times 70. And I started thinking to myself, so many things worse than what happened to me has happened to my mother in her life. And if she can forgive someone for attempting to take her sister's life, how do I not have enough strength to forgive my abuser? made me drop the gun was understanding that my parents didn't want me to become a product of my environment. They have sacrificed everything short of their life to give me the life that I have today. And my mom taught me that if somebody has wronged you and you're holding on to that, that's like holding you down. You're not free and you're not truly free until you forgive them. And from that teaching, I took that forgiveness means freedom.